Hey everyone and welcome back to MaggieBot's Top 100 Games of All Time. You have reached video number two in this small series. These are my picks from number 90 through 81. So at number 90, surprising no one, is the game No Thanks. No Thanks is a tiny little card game from a guy named Thorsten Gimler, who I hadn't heard of before I did this video, so I looked him up, and he's just got a bunch of these smart little numbered card games, and it looks like that's really his wheelhouse, and it is no surprise that No Thanks came from his giant brain. Um, no Thanks is kind of a... Kind of a like anti bidding game. I don't know. What to, I don't know what this mechanism is called, but you basically you don't want cards. You want other people to take cards, and the only cards you want are in a specific sequence. And so you are basically paying a resource to avoid the card as long as you can. Um, and at the end of the game, the person with the fewest uh, value cards in front of them wins. And it's so so perfect for a night out or starting out like at the bar with a couple drinks. I love No Thanks. I think it is the perfect thing to just have in a pocket to teach literally to anyone. I, I love it so much. Number 89 is Mysterium from Portal Games. Um, I kind of lucked out. So I have a, a, a friend I call Luke, you're a friend of mine, right? Uh, he watches my vlogs and stuff on Board Game Geek, and sometimes he'll send me emails and stuff. And a lot of the times, he's trying to give me games I might not have heard of, and one of the first ones he ever recommended to me was, I'm gonna butcher this Polish, to Gemnice de Mastro, uh, from Portal Games. Uh, he said that it, it had just come out, and it was getting lots of cool buzz, and I should really check it out. Because I'm not huge party gamer I thought um okay Luke I'll, I'll take a look and then I saw it oh my god so these are Dixit size cards with all this full art and it's so gorgeous so this is one of those very few instances where I start begging for favors from people I know in the industry I actually messaged Ignacy Travacek from Portal Games, and I begged him to bring me a copy in a suitcase for, I think it was his first Gen Con, and it was my first Gen Con, um, and he, the sweetheart that he is, put it into his suitcase for me and gave it to me when I was there. Um, so I got pretty early onto this train. Um, that BGG Con was the BGG Con where this game just blew up, like, all of this... Um, crazy buzz around it and it was sold out everywhere and um, Asma Day had picked it up but no one knew when it was coming out. Um, it was just, it was a cool, crazy, weird year. Um, so I, I quite like it and it's one of the very few party games that I will probably keep in my collection for a long, long time. You won't see too many of those on here. Actually, I was pleasantly surprised that there were a number of party games in my top 100. Number 88, speaking of light fillers that I like, uh, you have Parade. This is a 2007 title from Naoki Hama. Or Hama. Um, the version I have is the Z-Man version, like the one on the screen, and it was done in like a pub game series. So like inside it, when you first get your copy, you get little coasters that aren't used in the game. They're just part of the pub series thing. But the art on the box... It's a little like Indonesia or Brazil that's coming out soon. It's just this like matte finish box with a foil on it in these beautiful like patterns. Um, Parade is also Alice in Wonderland themed. So it has little like hints of the White Rabbit and the Cheshire Cat and Alice. Um, just beautiful packaging. Um, the game itself is super clever and I love it and you can teach it to anyone. Um, I I don't know about six players, but I played it from two to four pretty pretty happily at two. It's a little bit more luck dependent and it can be frustrating for heavier gamers, but I still quite like it as just a little like card game to stick in a pocket. Number 87 is Samala from 2012. This is a two to four player roll and write board game from Marcus and Inca brand. Um, I have got to say that it was one of the first roll and rights after Yahtzee that I ever played. So, um, roll and write is so hot right now, but, uh, San Malo came out a couple years ago. And what's really fun about this one is that it is, um, dry eraser. So like you, you, you Yahtzee roll your dice and then you draw pictures to make a little city and you're trying to prevent like pirates and get points. And it's just so fun. I really like when you have to optimize, but all players have the same kind of resources to do it. 
um, another kind of similar feeling to like a Lee Mace or something, but just everyone gets different dice rolls, of course. Um, really just quite lovely and fun game. Uh, number 86 is Red 7. Um, this is from Carl Chudik and my friend Chris Sizlik. Sizlik? I, I don't know that I've ever said his last name out loud. Sorry, Chris, if that is wrong. But it's a two to four player little hand management game. Apparently, this is going to be the pub series in my top 100 because this is a lot of pub games in a row. Um, what is nice about Red 7 is that it's clever and combo based, and I really love that um, it was getting a lot of buzz. So I, I will basically buy anything that Carl or Chris do so it wasn't like I wasn't gonna buy this game but all I heard about was Rodney Smith from Watch It Play and walking around I think it was Gen Con before I went to BGG Con that year and teaching everyone and their mother how to play this game um, he did something similar last year with Fuji Flush but I, I still remember that Red 7 was like the thing because he taught it to everyone he came across and my friend Tiffany learned it from him and then taught it to me I think originally um I I just think it's such a darling fun easy to play but hard to master game and I'm actually really good at this one um it is a little bit luck dependent there are definitely crap out hands but the the game when it's somewhat fair is a higher skill than you might think I I, I think it's one of the smarter, more clever uh, little party game filler games out there. Um, number 85, another party game. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you can tell I made these slides and then completely forgot what was on them, you know, in what order. <laughs> uh, so number 85 is Shadowhunters, which was a 2005 title. It is a four to eight player game um, designed by Yasutaka Ikeda. Um, I don't know Yasutaka Ikeda very well. Uh, they did the Shadowhunters and the Shadowhunters expansion and had a couple other things on the Board Game Geek page, but not a lot of titles. Um, this came to the States from Z-Man Games, and there were two editions, basically, and I think I have the second edition because it has, like, a few extra characters in it, but, um, I love it. I, I, I think, um... There's a mechanism in Shadowhunters that I've yet to really see in a lot of other games. Um, so everyone's trying to figure out who's on their team so they can kill the other team. And one of the decks of cards is not used a lot in Shadowhunters because everyone just ends up just beating up on everybody else. But you can um, look at a clue card and hand it to someone secretly and they have to give you a piece of information, but no one else at the table gets to know what that is. So of course you are probably getting pictures of Ponzi scheme in your head and a little bit from Mystery of the Abbey, but for the most part this style of deduction is not used a high amount and I, I, I thought it was quite clever. And I really love that the damage dealt to players is the difference between a d4 and a d6 and you roll them simultaneously. It's just a, a it's a really fun way of doing dice combat. I like that. Number 84 is Role Player from 2016. This is a two to four player little action selection game from a guy named Keith who started publishing under Thunderworks Games. Uh, Role Player was a Kickstarter title that I completely Completely did not hear about from Kickstarter. Um, the way that I found out about it was um, it went up for pre-order at work for my shop and I usually just Google things so I kind of Googled around that one and I thought it was just like the cleverest theme on earth. This game you are rolling a character for an RPG so it's a dice dice selection action selection game and it's just so that is so stinking clever it's such a good kind of pun I really love that and um what's nice about role player is that it is simple it's about an hour long it's lightweight but the choices in it feel fun and important and has a little bit of that action combo thing because every time you place a die to roll your character and add up your attributes, you are being able to manipulate the dice that you've already placed. And it's just, it's a, it's a good feeling game. It's about to go back on Kickstarter for its expansion, which I guess is Monsters or something similar. Um, I will be a day one backer for sure. I'm not one for a lot of expansions. And I don't generally like expansions that change the game too much, but it sounds like this is just going to give you more of the same, which is exactly what I want for this particular game. 
Uh, number 83 is Ships, which is a 2015 Martin Wallace title. It is two to four players, published by Tree Frog. Uh, comes in a pretty, uh, I mean, it's a deluxe version that has little metal or um, wooden coins instead of a uh, regular chipboard. Um, Ships has one of the worst rule books on this list. I'm going to I'm going to give it up to Ships and Solarius Mission in recent memory of really just exceptionally bad rule books. Um, Ships suffers a little bit from being kind of intimidating if anything. Uh, the, Every, every turn you're, you're placing a ship and the rules for placing the ship down are pages and pages long and every time I go to teach it to someone I have to relearn it because it just does not want to stick in my brain so something about the rules writing process got lost here but it's a fabulous really fun interesting interactive Martin Wallace game and he's not he's not real high up on my list so you won't see a lot of Martin Wallace titles but I, I do respect him for how many and how prolific his games have been over the years. Um, number 82 is also brand new. We got into the new section of my list. Um, this is Papa Paolo from 2016. It's a two to four player game from Quined. And this, I have never said this name out loud. It was designed by Fabrice van der Bogard. I'm assuming I butchered that. Uh, so Papa Paolo is a pizza delivery game, of course. Uh, it's fabulous and it has a really uh, interesting bidding mechanism in it, but um, more than anything else, this has the most stickers that you'll ever sticker in a sticker game. It's just uh, ridiculous. I think it was 144 stickers or pieces or um, each individual pizza box and this one has a little sticker for it. I had so much fun because I, I really enjoy stickering games that um, I did this one and then I went to a game store locally that had a copy and so I stickered their copy too. <laughs> you ever need my sticker services you let me know. I will do that. Uh, number 81 is Skull and Roses from 2011. This is a three to six player party game from Hervé Marley. Uh, published originally by Louis Mem. Uh, they sold the rights to make this purple box you see in the picture. Um, and that one is from Asmodee Games, but I have one of the older sets personally because originally Skull and Roses had a way cooler theme. Like you're in a biker bar and you were trying to like earn your way through these bikers, like, lies and stuff. I, I don't even know. It was just, like, all of this old-school Flash-style tattoo art in the original two games that, I, that I've seen. And then this new one has kind of a just flower motif and kind of a Day of the Dead feel to the skulls. It's a little odd. It's an odd choice overall. What's nice about the new edition, which I might have to buy at some point, is that it has thistles, and I love thistles. So, um... I just think it's so fun. I'm fantastically bad at this game. It requires you to bid on how many coasters uh, across the table that you can flip up without hitting a skull. And I have lost this game. I think I've won it twice, maybe three times, but it's always, it's always just a big show for me. I can't play that game. And now, um, for the end of this video, I may have gone through my hundred list and forgotten a game. So we're going to add in a 101st game. That's right. Bonus content. Uh, this is 80.5. This is Chicken Caesar from 2012. This is a three to six player game from Brian Fisher and John Sizemore it was lovely Brian Fisher art. Um, this goes into my list as the absolute worst name on the list for a game. Chicken Caesar was a really poorly used pun in my mind because this game does not appear to be what it is. And what it is is basically playing diplomacy in 90 minutes instead of eight hours. Um, so in Chicken Caesar, there is no randomness. There's no luck. There's no goofy cards or event tiles or dice or whatever else that that name says to you. This is, this is a negotiation uh, game that is so pure and lovely and well done and beautiful that I hate that they kept this pun name and this art direction because there there's this chicken coop theme running through it. It's kind of like the book Animal Farm, but it was like the chickens decided to use Roman infrastructure when they were building their coop. Um, and it, 
I love this game and it's so hard to get people to play it. I actually don't own it. This is this is one of the few games on my top 100 I don't own. Um, I, I've got my eye out for a copy and a trade or something, so if anyone wants to give me a good offer for that, I would be happy to take it off your hands because it's so fabulous. But man oh man, um, it is really hard to convince people to play this, find the correct mentalities to play it. Um, you, you really need people that are okay with diplomacy because at some point someone's going to win and it was your fault that they did if you didn't win. <laughs> like, it's just, that's what it comes down to. Um, quite lovely and it just happened to not be in any of my logged plays or anything on Board Game Geek, so it didn't make it into my rankings and so I was talking about games last night and this one just popped into my mind and I had to make myself a little note that, you know, that's not in your top 100. It really should be there somewhere. Um, it would be higher. This would be much higher if I could get people to play it with me. So Chicken Caesar number 80.5. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. If you did not watch numbers 100 through 91, well, maybe you would like to now. You can uh, definitely do that within this playlist. And I should have numbers... 80 for real this time through uh, 71 next week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will chat with you later. Bye.